What is up guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred and welcome back to another episode of Pokemon News Daily, a daily Pokemon show where I go over Pokemon news spamming across all the Pokemon games, including Pokemon Ultra Sun and Ultra Moon, Pokemon Quest, Pokemon Go, and of course, Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee Games. Today is Monday, July 9th, 2018, the day after Pokemon Go Community Day. So let's start off with that. Yesterday, Pokemon Go Community Day was Squirtle and when evolving war total into blastoids they will learn the move hydro blast which is a two bar charge move that isn't so great on blastoids but in my opinion to make up for that niantic gave us a shiny squirtle but also gave us squirtle wearing sunglasses for people who completed field research tasks we've seen this style of squirtle before in the anime appearing as the squirtle squad on top of that they also had a chance of also appearing shiny as well so technically there was a lot to do in that three hour window for Pokemon Go Community Day I was able to get four shiny Squirtles two of them being the Squirtle with the shades from the Squirtle squad I was kind of disappointed on the shades itself I wish it was the pointy shades um seen here I'm having an image of the Squirtle squad Squirtle I wish it was that one rather than what we got in game but it's pretty cool it looks cooler on the Blastoise if anything which I love the shiny with the green shell and the purple Blastoise looks cool in the game. So, as always, after Pokemon Go Community Day on Pokemon News Daily, I would like to hear from you guys. What did you guys catch on Pokemon Go Community Day? Let me know in the comment section below how many shinies you were able to get. If you got any shinies, did you participate? Didn't you participate? Let me know everything in the comment section below. So, without no further ado, let's go to our first official news story of today. So, the first news story is going to be about the 2018 North America International Championship from Columbus, Ohio. This, of course, is coming from Pokemon.com. I'm going to have a link to this website in the description below. Now, basically, they list here all of the finalists, all of the winners, where they're from, their names, their deck they use, etc. so far and so far. If you are interested, I'm going to have a link to this in the description below so you guys can check out all the details on all the finalists and all the winners, see the decks they use, see the Pokemon they brought, and I think this is pretty cool. If you are interested, again, in getting into the official Pokemon leagues and stuff like that and earning championship points and you know playing for your country and stuff like that because what thing I did like about that it being in Columbus Ohio it was an international challenge so people from all over the world could participate including the winner of the juniors division finalist she was from Germany which was cool you get people from Canada people from France people from Norway you know Pokemon is a global game so it was so good to see you know even kids kids from worldwide coming out to Columbus, Ohio to participate in this Pokemon event. I thought it was pretty cool to see. Let me know your thoughts on the 2018 International Championship that took place in Ohio in the comment section below. And did you catch any of the live streams? I jumped in and out of a couple of live streams. There are fully posted versions of the live streams now up on the official Pokemon YouTube page. I'm also going to have that linked in the description just in case you want to jump around and check those live finalist matches, which are intense. It is a good watch if you want to check it out i'm gonna have links to all that in the description below while we're talking about the 2018 pokemon international challenge we also got word on the 2018 pokemon world championship the official final one for 2018 i believe so anyway um we got how you go to register for badges and registration news we got information on the side events on the nashville open the pokemon tournament dx last chance qualifier all the streaming information and stuff like that if you want to check it out i'm we're gonna have a link to this article as well in the description below on the Pokemon World Championship. Again, coming from the Pokemon Company themselves on the Pokemon.com website. Now, the second news story is actually about the Pokemon anime. This is coming from GameRant.com. I have a link to this news article in the description below. But basically, a Pokemon Sun and Moon English dub anime episode has been banned in the US. Just a little bit backstory. This is not 
the first time a Pokemon episode has been banned in the US for something like this. And let's jump into it so you could kind of see what's going on here. Now, it basically goes over the first time they got banned. It says, in the early days, a number of episodes of Pokemon Animated English Dub were banned for a number of reasons. Episodes have been banned occurred rarely since then, but now an episode of Pokemon Sun and Moon English Dub has been banned. It was originally set to air at the end of July or early August. The episode in question is episode 64 of the Pokemon Sun and Moon anime and is the 1003rd episode of the series in general. It has no English title and originally aired in Japan this past March. The episode revolves around the Pokemon called Pansimian. During the course of the plot, Ash wears face paint to disguise himself as one of the creatures in a manner that somewhat resembles the racist practice of blackface. Now, I want to stop right here because that kind of sums up why the episode has been banned in the US. And again, connecting it to episodes that have been banned in the past is because of Jinx. The character Jinx kind of looks like a human in a blackface. Very similar, if not spot on, to what the blackface represented. So I kind I kinda understood why at that time of history they wanted to ban something like that, especially on a Pokemon show that was so big at the time in the 90s. Pokemon was the biggest thing in the 90s. Not so right now, still big. Uh, if you're talking money-wise, if you're talking about, you know, the spam, you ask anybody what Pokemon is, they could generally tell you something about it. But to to ban an episode because Ash got dressed up like a monkey, it's totally, it's a total disconnect from what the person seen images of and literally basically thought that was the case in the show and just said no this is dotting on that line a little bit too closely we need to ban it in America. As a Puerto Rican African American that grew up in the US I don't see this as racist at all. Yes there has been tons of stuff that has been racist surrounding around blackface. Do I think blackface is racist? Yes. White actors or you know white cartoons or whatever the case may be dresses up in a blackface intentionally to poke fun at their face being black. Do I find that racist and offensive? Yes. In this context, was Ash doing that to be racist and offensive? No. I think, again, he was just trying to get close to these creatures, the Pensimian, and only way to do that was to dress up as them. Again, I do not think that this was intentionally done for racist reasons. Obviously, as reading the article, you could kind of see that that it wasn't done for racist reasons. That The weird part is that that's why they got banned, which doesn't make any sense. Let me know in the comment section below, where do you fall on basically this episode getting banned. I know it's just one episode out of thousand. This is a thousand and third episode. This is basically nothing. You missing this one episode is probably not going to change nothing as far as knowing the lore in the Pokemon anime. To me, it's just kind of sad. It's kind of sad to see the disconnect between the people that make these decisions on what gets banned or not and actual reality of the situation, you know, is that they didn't watch the episode. And if they did, they're clearly blind on the situation probably walking on eggshells when it comes to topics like this and rather than just air it out and defend it they rather just be like no let's not air it at all so we won't have to defend it we won't have to cover up media or you know talk about it what happened you know why it was shown or whatever the case may be now they got it basically the same thing because now the episode is not going to be shown people are going to wonder where this episode is why this episode is not and when they go looking they're going to see this black face and they go oh that's why they want it over because it was racist and because there's no english double it, they won't see that it wasn't. To me, it's a whole shitstorm regardless either way. And they should have just aired it and just defended it in black yo. There was not racist content in this show. That's why we aired it. You know, he puts on a monkey mask. Yes, the monkey mask is black. Okay, and it's not even it's not even black black. You know what I'm saying? It's not like it's you know pitch black. It's like Prosimian black, which is weird. It's like almost like an ape you know, like a, a monkey black. You know, monkey's not really black, black, black. It's just like almost, it's a shade. I, I can't even pronounce it. It's, it's, you know, you know what I'm getting at. It's not like it was pitch black. There's a difference between a black face and the face that Ash was wearing during the episode. So let me know what side of the coin you fall on. Do you think that it was just a miscommunication from the people that makes that decision and just seen Ash in that costume and was like, no, clear cut, let's stop it, let's not air it? Or do you think that they potentially really thought that this was 
racist, that they were aiming to be racist um, stuff in this episode, and that's why they banned it. Do you think that it's okay that they should have just aired it and just defended it like I do? Let me know any thoughts on this in the comment section below. Now, this news story is from mobilesyrup.com, and yes, it is about Pokemon Go, because we can't not go a day without talking about Pokemon Go. Now, Pokemon Go players are spending more than two million a day on the game in in game app purchases now that's more than two million dollars a day niantic and the pokemon company are raking in more than two million dollars a day that is insane to think about think about it every day two million dollars for a game that you made you probably have to pay a ton of people to throw events and to maintain it and to update and add stuff to the game yes but jesus christ you're making two million dollars a day that is insane that is literally insane and we didn't even jump into the article this is coming from mobile syrup.com i'm gonna have a link to this article in the description below buy our man brad show brad some love jump over over to this article to drop some comments and stuff like that. It says Pokemon Go has been going through a bit of a resurgence lately with analyst firm Senior Tower now reporting that the game has made over 1.8 USD, that's US dollars, since its launch two years ago. That's 1.8 billion dollars, guys. 1.8 billion. Oh my God, that's a lot of money. And that's only with the two year span of the game being out right now. I said the game isn't making as much money as it was during its first summer, but it's still ranking in about $2 million a day, according to Senior Tower. Now that is crazy. It's crazy to think about. It says Senior Tower also reports that Google Play users make up to 58% of the game's revenue, while Apple users consist of the remaining 42%. It says in Canada, Pokemon Go is still the number one top grossing game on the Google Play Store and it's number two behind Fortnite on the iOS Apple Store. According to Senior Tower, the app is also in the top 10 grossing games in the US, the UK, Germany, and more. As the game adds more features like quests and trading, it's beginning to capture a large audience again. It's going to be interesting to see if this game moves back into the number one spot in the coming months. Do I think Pokemon Go has the power to move back into that number one slot? I wanna say no right now with all this Fortnite hype and everybody want to play Fortnite on every device and play together and stuff like that. I don't really see that happening, especially once Fortnite breaks into the Android market. I think Fortnite is gonna have another boom and make another, you know, $10 million in a day, whatever the fuck they make, and it's gonna be stronger than Pokemon Pokemon Go top grossing sales. Yes, but does it really matter when you're making $2 million a day? Not really, not really. I don't think Niantic and the Pokemon company are complaining about making $2 million a day. Would they love to make more? Of course, would they love to make the amount of money that they made literally when the game launched? Yes, but they already got those people's money. I think they do want to continue and see more success. Will they ever reach that success? I don't think so. I do think they might see another resurgence way happen once the Let's Go games are released, but we do have to see on how that transfers over because people might want to jump on Pokemon Go again to transfer over Pokemon to these Let's Go games. I don't see why is my question because me as a Pokemon Go player and as a Pokemon Core RPG player, I do enjoy both. Do I want them to interconnect? I think it's a cool feature. It's not the main selling point for me. I'm not gonna go hard in Pokemon Go to capture something to send it to Pokemon Let's Go. I, and that's just me. I think I prefer catching those Pokemon in those games respectively, especially if they are catchable in those games. Now the lone Pokemon, of course, I'm gonna bring them over from the Pokemon Go games because as we know right now, there aren't catchable and a little bit more on new details coming from Pokemon Let's Go in the next segment. But to me, these games are different from each other in a different world. I don't want to see too much crossbreeding on my end. I'm gonna try my best to, again, 100% Let's Go without bringing in Pokemon from Pokemon Go. That may be impossible, but I think what I'm gonna do is bring in versions exclusive Pokemon that I've caught in, in Go that aren't in Let's Go and then bring them, you know, bring over the ones that you can't catch or whatever the case may be on that end. I think I might do that. And hell, I, I think I might bring over a shiny or two. I don't think, I think so. Especially if I can bring my shiny Charizard, I think I would do that 100%. Depending on how we can catch Charmander in the game, hell, 
Maybe we can shiny hunt um, Charmander. I think that'll be pretty cool. I want to see how shinies are represented in the game. Are we going to see them shiny out in the wild or are we going to have to enter the battle? Who knows? Let me know your thoughts on it in the comment section below. And let me know your thoughts on Pokemon Go making $2 million a day in the comment section below. Now, I want to end off today's Pokemon News Daily with this rumor lead. Take it with a grain of salt about the July Nintendo Direct, which officially hasn't been announced but everybody is certain that we're gonna get one in July with Nintendo also stating that they have more surprises for 2018 that haven't yet been announced we are slated for one in July so there's a rumor that's going around and this is post by anonymous about the Nintendo direct in July so again take it with a grain of salt now I check with my sources that can confirm and not confirm on multiple levels that this is kind of true there's some stuff in here that they're like we have not heard of like no this is not not that it's not true they just don't have an ear on that part of nintendo and certain stuff they do one thing that a lot of people are pointing out is that july 22nd throughout july 28th is the last week in july if there were to be a direct in july it would be during the last week they also point out that it's most likely on the 27th the 27th is a very interesting date because a couple of embargoes that are already given out to press is going to be up in July. Now that's the word I'm hearing and I cannot say what those embargo games are on. I don't want to get those people in trouble for whatever the case. So let's just leave it at that. There's a, a couple of games that are embargoed that are going to be revealed and basically talked about in the press on July 27th that people actually got their hands on and played or seen. That is going to be revealed at this Nintendo Direct as well. So it's letting a lot of people to believe or at least speculate that this information that is with these dates are true again this is pokemon news daily so they talk about the yoshi game who cares they talk about kirby's who cares they talk about warrior wear who cares they talk about mario odyssey which i care about dlc being modern recreations of mario 64 levels sounds incredible and sounds like a dream i asked a couple of people and a couple of people were saying they have yet to heard anything on that mario front and that if this leak was real it wouldn't contain anything about mario odyssey because of certain factors that they can't share and a lot of stuff around Nintendo first party stuff usually don't get super leaked unless it's being handled by a third party developer and Mario Odyssey is being held in house with Mario so it's very very unlikely that this stuff is actually leaking about Mario Odyssey stuff so that's one of the biggest takeaways that people are saying well this just spoils the rest of the rumors because in the leaks in this bunch of stuff because again that stuff wouldn't really leak out but again this is a pokemon news daily and it says pokemon will show up strangely nothing about the 2019 game obviously too early for the 2019 game the 2018 games haven't been released yet it says just some more info about the pokemon let's go pikachu and let's go eevee game to me obviously if there is a nintendo direct in july you can guess that we're gonna see some type of brand new pokemon trailer revealing some brand new pokemon information now that's why i did want to include include this quote unquote leak rumor speculation about the next Nintendo Direct is because if we do get a Nintendo Direct in July on the 27th, which a lot of people pointing at as a true date, what information for Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee would you like to know that haven't been revealed yet? One of them that I think might be revealed is the inclusion of a low end Pokemon. We know you can bring your Kanto Pokemon from Pokemon Go into Pokemon Let's Go. We know that you can bring their low end form from Pokemon Pokemon Go into Pokemon Let's Go. Now, what we don't know is there going to be a way inside Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee to catch these Alolan forms outside of bringing them straight from Go. Now, that's information that I think they would reveal before the game is released, especially if there's going to be some, some tie to Alolan within these games, which doesn't sound too crazy if we can visit at least one of the Alolan Islands while we're at Kanto, or maybe travel was the Aether Paradise, if there's an Aether Paradise place that we can go to while we're in Kanto, I think that's a strong 
possibility, if anything, being revealed at this July Direct. Also, uh, something I would see them reveal at a trailer is post-game stuff. Not post-game meaning, you know, are we gonna have a, you know, a post-game story? I think what they will reveal in this trailer is if we are going to have a battle tree or a battle, you know, network to, or some something to that effect where you can go out and just straight up battle. Because that's one thing they haven't shown via Pokemon Let's Go, Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, is the battling stuff. They showed us the Pokemon Go integration. They showed us the Pokeball. They showed us how we're going to be catching Pokemon. They showed that it's going to be a basically remake of Pokemon Yellow. But what they didn't show us is how battling is going to be working on a pro level. Yes, we've seen that you can edit the stats of a Pokemon, you know, with candies and stuff like that. Yes, we've seen actual battles inside of Ringling Forest with videos and with the treehouse and stuff like that. But what we haven't seen is actual hardcore battles on a pro level. We haven't seen people build teams. We haven't seen trainers fighting other, you know, trainers late in the game and stuff like that with, you know, six Pokemon on the team, fighting six Pokemon on the team that's gonna put you through hell. We haven't seen stuff like that and I would hope they reveal certain stuff like that before the game is released. Again, to reel in those Pokemon trainers or Pokemon, you know, fans that are looking at the Pokemon Let's Go games and saying no this is pokemon go too like i don't want this like you know that that doesn't want a pokemon go game with a pokemon rpg battle system that's what a lot of people are saying this games look and feel like i would 100 percent see them trying to reel in those core rpg players by showing them there are aspects to the game that are just centered around the fighting you know mechanic show them that there's a pokemon stadium style game or something like that within this game that they can go to that they can go and you know just pick whatever team and battle somebody online or battle you know somebody that's sitting next to you with couch co-op and you know cooperative play i think they they need to show something like that before the game's released to reel in those players let me know what you think in the comment section below of whatever we will see from this july 27th nintendo direct in the comment section below now that's gonna do it for pokemon news daily again for today monday july 9th let me know in the comment section below your thoughts on everything we went over today if it was pokemon go community day let me know your results from pokemon go community day what did you capture what do you think is going to be the next pokemon go community day pokemon what do you think about pokemon go reaching two million dollars of in-game purchases a day do you think that's insane do you think that's nuts i think that's incredible and it shows that that game is not going anywhere let me know your thoughts on the pokemon 2018 North America International Championship. I thought it was pretty cool. I dipped and dabble in the streams a couple of times this weekend. I enjoyed the matches I did see. But let me know your thoughts on the results of that in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts on the 2018 Pokemon World Championship that's going to be going on in Nashville. Are you going to be interested in that and seeing that when it goes live in the streams and stuff like that? I'm going to have all the streaming information in the comment section below. Let me know your thoughts about the Pokemon Sun and Moon English dub anime episode that got banned because of the blackface. Do you think it's BS? Do you think it's actually relevant to actually have that episode being aired in America? I don't think it's really too bad that we missed out on it. Again, I haven't seen the episode for myself, so I would have to go back and check and see how cool the episode is. If Ash catches a Pokemon or something within that episode, then I would be like, yeah, we did lose something. But I doubt that that'd be a real issue or a real case to kind of defend or, you know, deny that the fact that the Pokemon company was racist, even though I don't believe they were intentionally racist about that. Let me know how you feel about it in the comment section below. Like always, guys, I'm Daddy Gamer Fred on Instagram and Twitter, and you guys can bring the conversation there. I'm the American Gamer in Switzerland right here on YouTube, and yes, I'm going to be doing a ton of videos just like this one. So if you enjoy, please hit that subscribe button button also hit the like button it does help me out a ton as far as growing the channel is concerned ring the bell if you want to be notified on the next time i drop a video peace i'm gonna see you guys on the next one